Hello, and welcome to another 8-minute demo. Today we're going to be talking about Opalis Integration Server and its new integration point from VMM SSP 2.0 SP1. My name is Charles Joy. I'm a Senior Business Development Manager for Microsoft. Welcome to Virtual Machine Manager Self-Service Portal 2.0 SP1. And today I'm going to show you how to hook it up to Opalis and then how to execute Opalis Integration Server policies from this portal. Uh, and you can configure it to pass data from the portal right to the uh, Opalis integration server and then that data will be used in the workflow. So uh, first you have to have it set up and you should follow all the instructions for that that's well documented. There's lots of documentation that comes with it and you can see that I've um, gone through the steps to set it up. You can see I have some requests in there. I have an infrastructure set up and my virtual machines are showing up, the ones that are attached to my VMM server. All right. And um, you can see in the past I've uh, executed some jobs, including a custom Opalis action. I'm going to create one of those from scratch for you today so you can see uh, how you can do that for yourself. And of course, once we're done, uh, it'll show up as another task down here so you can execute against different machines. You can execute the workflow against the various machines. This is new feature functionality for this release, which it just came out a little while ago. And uh, I really like it. It does depend on a couple things. So you do need a working operator console for Opalis. It actually uses the web service, which I'm going to bring up right now. So I have the web service running. And of course, this is attached to the Ops console itself. So if we tear that back just to the web console itself. So you have to have this working and up and running, for one thing. And it has to be set up with Active Directory. So this is... So that's the first thing, one of the first things you have to have. Working Operator Console with Active Directory Authentication and the web services has to be up, which if the console's up, the web service is up. Now, one of the first places that you configure that is if you go into Settings here, Configure Global Settings, scroll all the way to the bottom, or you can click Opalis Integration here. And then you're going to want to put the WSDL URL in here. And that WSDL URL for me is HTTP server name and then the rest here and I'll put this in the blog post of course but that's the WSDL URL then you need to identify the Opalis username that is going to have the permissions to actually query these policies to access them and then execute them and for me in my environment it's CJ demo backslash administrator obviously if you have something different set up you're going to configure yours to be different so after you've configured this, or before, depends on how you read the documentation, uh, you do have to authorize that user to be able to perform these actions. And there's a PowerShell script right on or, the VMM self-service portal server, wherever you have it installed. And we're going to go do that now. So I'm just going to go ahead and log into that server. And go ahead and navigate service scripts and then add user profile. So you want to run this with the as prescribed. So I'm just going to open that. I'll run this administrator. I'm going to navigate to this folder. And it's add user profile. And I'm just going to enter. There we go. You might have to change some configuration to allow this to run. And then we're going to do add that same user that you added earlier. So it's going to be CJ demo backslash administrator. There we go. It's done. So it's uh, been added. So you'll have to do that on yours for the user that you want to use. We'll close out of this. And we'll pop back over. So I added this guy. I have the web service here. Everything's good to go for the palace configuration. Now we actually enable a custom action here and then go populate it with an actual workflow, which we have to create the workflow yet. So let's just create a custom action, display name, and enable it. So this is going to be 8-minute action. This will be the name that you see on the front page there. So if we hit Save and we go to Reach Your Machine Jobs, you can see that it's here. Obviously, I clicked here. It's not going to do anything, so we have to actually configure that. So that was the name was configured in Global Settings, but we need to configure a Virtual Machine Action. So we go ahead and go Customize. 
So we're going to go ahead and customize a virtual machine action here. When you see this for the first time, you'll just see Master Action XML. I've actually created a copy of that already, and I'm going to edit that one in a second. But what you'll do is have the selection on Master Action XML, and then hit Copy Action XML. Uh, and then you'll get into a screen that looks very similar to this. And then you'll just rename it to whatever you want. I'm going to call it OIS Actions XML. You can name whatever you want. And you can see you have the option to edit or add the existing tasks that are in here, create VM, deploy VM, all that. But down below here, we have custom action one through five. And the first custom action is the one we identified. So I'm going to go ahead and hit add task here. This is going to be demo task. And we could put a description here, uh, eight minute video Opalis demo and we'll change this to Opalis policy. You can see you have other options but we're talking about Opalis policy here. And we're going to go ahead and select our Opalis policies. This came up real quick for me. If you have a lot of uh, policies it may actually fail with an error and I'll put the information on how to resolve those errors. They're also in the documentation that comes with SSP but uh, if you get an error don't fret. Uh, we have a way around it. We'd actually search for a workflow here but I don't, haven't created it yet so I'm going to hop into a palace right now and we're just going to create a new policy and we're going to do my standard one everyone knows and loves well I don't know if you love it or not but custom start run program and send platform event I'm going to go ahead and connect these up we're going to add some custom start parameters the standard ones computer command and folder finish. We're going to associate those over here. Computer, command, and folder. We're done with this. And this guy, we're just going to add um, command results. And command was program path. And this is the results. And pure output. All right. I'll change this. I always like to change it. Initiate palace task from SSP. All right, we'll check this guy in. Now I'm just going to go ahead and search for 8-Minute Video Palace example over in the self-service portal. There it is. I'm going to hit save. And then we get to fill out the input parameters. So command, we're just going to do an IP config, keep it simple. Folder, we don't need a folder for that command. And computer, we're actually going to do a runtime value, so it's dynamic based on the virtual machine we have selected. I'm going to choose name. And then if you read the instructions or the documentation, output parameters are not supported for a palace policy uh, tasks. And uh, we don't have any other options here to fill out that pertain to us. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. And we're going to hit save again. Actually, we're going to pop back in there to make sure it uh, saved, and obviously it would, but there it is, demo task for custom action one. So cancel editing. We'll go back, settings, global configuration settings, and that's going to initiate custom action one, and it'll be named 8-Minute Demo OIS Action. It's good. And now if we go to virtual machines, choose a virtual machine. We have one for DPM selected. Let's go ahead and hit 8-Minute Demo OIS Action, and hopefully... Uh, everything will work appropriately. So let's go to, oh, it's already done. All three actions were taken. If we go to the events tab, we can see it did an IP config, and we can see it got a address of 143, so let's do a ping from this machine. And there we go. 192.168.143, just like we did from, received from the IP config on that machine. Now, obviously, if we go back into here and we choose VMM, go ahead and execute that. We can see there's another one, and the VMM server is 50. I don't know if you need me to continue to prove this out, but. There you go, it's 50. So, looking good. 
All right, so we know it's working from the Opal side. Let's go take a look at the logs there on SSP. So we'll hop over to jobs, and you can see we have the ones that I just submitted and a couple other test runs that I did offline. Um, and you can see that it executed from here, and we can see the logs are obviously executing here. Now you can basically build whatever you need for your scenarios and you can execute them passing data from SSP based on the data that's available. I, there is a limited number of items that is available and you're not automatically prompted for stuff. But that's fine. You could define the tasks that you want with the values that you want, pass in as much dynamic data as you can, and then you can execute policies. Obviously more complex than this and the good news is if you scroll down on the blog post past the video you can see that I have provided scenarios for service management, configuration management, data protection and administrative tasks so I have uh, 16 different policies here that you can hook up these are good policies period but these I you know thought there was a great synergy between SSP and um, these, these use case categories that I've developed policies for so uh, take a look at those but uh, in essence, that's what you have to do to get SSP 2.0 SP1 to work with Opalis. Not real complex. You just got to configure it, and then it's good to go. And then you'll be able to execute your custom actions on your various virtual machines right from here. One click. Not too bad. Enjoy. We certainly appreciate you watching. Thank you.